everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we're going to take a look at Attack at Dawn North Africa. This is a new game coming out from Panzer Division Games, a new company. Uh, I'm not familiar with them. I assume it's a small indie shop. Uh, as a matter of fact, I more than assume I know that they are. Um, this game is going to be coming out in the next quarter or so they haven't set an exact release date but they have released a demo version on steam now and that demo version you can download it for free and check out the game so i thought we would why not uh let's play and i thought we would play through the tutorial just to get you know kind of a sense of what the game's all about see if we like it see if uh, it's something we may want to play in the future and uh, let's do it. Uh, I thought we would first, well, let's just kind of look down the different things that we have here. You can see the different scenarios that will be coming out with the full game. Now, it looks like you can play the first El Alamein uh, here if you want to play that scenario. Well, that's cool. Okay, so you can play, you know, kind of a full scenario if you want to do that. Uh, you see easier, normal, harder. Looks like on this one, can you play the allies? Yeah, you can. Okay, so you can play both sides here. Gives a strength breakdown, situation and objective, uh, kind of a historical lesson there if you want that. So, excellent. All right, you can play a scenario. Load scenario, well, we don't have any of those, obviously. Uh, it looks like we'll have a campaign, a full campaign here in North Africa. Uh, multiplayer. Well, that's in beta. Uh, that'll be awesome. Awesome if they come up with a good multiplayer here, because obviously these games are going to be more fun to play against humans. Now, this is a WeGo game. You know, there have been a lot of North African games that have been put out over the years, some good, some not as good. Uh, but there never, I, as far as I know, there's only been one other WeGo game put out, and that is the Desert War 1940 to 42 that I'm also going to look at it on the channel because they're coming out with the new World War II WeGo system, and so I want to take a look at that. But usually these are all turn-based, of course. Uh, so this is a WeGo game, and I really like those. If you looked at my uh, talk about uh, WeGo World War II, how much I, I enjoy a WeGo system. So that is what this is. You put in your orders, and it all resolves simultaneously. So that'll be a lot of fun with another human. You'll both put in your orders, and then you know, you'll get a combat file to see what the heck happened. Uh, it looks like they've got the full manual here. Oh, excellent. Okay, so they've already got the manual up. Is this the full thing? Yes, it is. Okay. I do not know any more about this game than you do. So when we go through this tutorial, we're going to be doing it together. I mean, I don't have a clue. Now, eventually, maybe I'll make my own tutorial for it. We'll see. Let's go to options because I've already messed around with these a little bit. It's about the only thing with the game I've touched. Uh, and, you know, I took off the music. But I also uh, changed the unit view to counter. They have this uh, kind of model, top-down model view. I, I don't really like it. When I first opened the game, I was kind of like, eh, I don't I don't like it. It's kind of like uh, the John Tiller Software 3D uh, counter view. I, I don't like that one either. Uh, it looks kind of like that. They're kind of, instead of uh, square counters, they're more like rectangles. Not, not my cup of tea. So I switched over to counter. It looks like you can also play these as turn-based games if you want to, or turn-based scenarios campaign. Uh, but let's do the WeGo. We want to do real-time, right? Um, so let's just apply those, make sure they're applied, credits, quit. Okay, let's go into the tutorial and see what's going on. Tutorial 1. Okay, it's from January 5th, 1940 to January 5th, 1940. Offensive Allied, Objectives 1, start January 5th, 1940. Okay, this is the first tutorial where we will teach you the basics of the game. And in it, in it you will learn all about the game interface, units, groups, unit movement, group movement, and formations, stacks, and combat. Uh, the situation and objective, capture the objective by the end of the day. Give you a nice little map here so you can tell where you are, what's going on. We're going to be on the Allied side, it looks like. And it looks like we've got a few more troops and a few more tanks. More than a few more. I like that. Okay, let's play this and let's see what the game map looks like. Nice, right? I mean, I think this looks really, really nice. And you can see, 
you know, you've got the usual kind of hex system here. I did have the hexes turned on. I think you can turn these off if you want to see the sand. Uh, the traditional counters here looks just like a beautiful war game. Uh, board game, I should say. Well, of course it's a war game, uh, but a board game. Look at that. Zoom in, zoom out. Very smooth. You can go right or left. Let's just kind of look around here up into Tunisia and uh, back around. Yeah, I mean, look at this map. Really nice. Uh, I should have looked at exactly what the scale is. Um, I don't want to guess. I don't want to say a scale and then be wrong about it. Uh, there's Al Alamein there. Um, and you can see it, the different types. It's got road, asphalt, road. If you look down there to the right, you can see road, asphalt, road, movement times 1.5 times three motorized. Oh, that's nice. So they put that right up there for you. Uh, instead of you having to go look at the rule book or trying to remember uh, exactly what the modifiers are. So that's excellent. And then over here, what do we have? We've got hex grid visible. Oh, okay, there we go. And then we've got counter view. Oh, these are the, this is the model view. Okay, this is what I was talking about. This is the model view. Uh, and they put little troops out here right by the counters. That's what's a little bit different about the model view. If we take that off, then, then it just goes back to the NATO view. Uh, Real-time mode. Okay. Uh, we can switch to turn-based mode. Wow, this is great. Uh, I wish every game gave you the option to do WeGo or turn-based. Uh, interesting. Okay. I'm not sure. Oh, game speed. It's paused. All right. Paused. Slow down. Speed up. Oh, excellent. Okay, so this gives you the game time. Current time is uh, 9 o'clock or 19.05. Why does this say 9 o'clock? Current game time. Oh, and then sunset time. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's telling you the sun's going to go down at 1,905 hours. Right now, it's just 900 hours. Okay. I thought that they were giving us the old 12, you know, uh, to, to noon and then beyond here, and then converting it to military time, but no, that it's all in military time. Okay, clear and day one of one. You also see a mini-map down here. This is really nice. This looks good. I like this, and I really like that scroll. <laughs> that goes to tell you I've played a lot of uh, turn-based games when you're commenting on how much you like the smooth scrolling. Uh, welcome to Nile Dale Delta Training Grounds General. Your mission is to prepare your forces for deployment on the Western Desert Theater. You will be given our elite 7th Armored Division with the goal to train it as much as possible before the start of hostilities. To move through the tutorial, use the next and previous to exit the tutorial exit. Okay, uh, we can always press F1 for help. Okay, and it, you know, it gives you information as you hover over this. You can look down there. So let's just select this. Can I select this? Yeah, I did. And this will be halt, split, target, detach and attach, first Royal Tank Regiment. Okay, 7th Armored. We've got morale. Oh, wow, so these... these uh, Tooltips are awesome. Man, why doesn't every game have a tooltips just like this? It's so, it, it makes so much sense. It's fairly easy from a programming standpoint. And this just tells you everything you need. I mean, you know, why, why do you have to go search through a rule book? You could just look right here. Attack soft, attack hard, defense, movement. Black is motorized. Red is mechanized. Blue is foot. Artie only. Holy smokes, I love that. Headquarters, this unit contains Divisional Brigade Headquarters. Uh, it shows the headquarters range, all right? Strength is three, including 48 tanks, a British tank, fuel supply, ammo supply, and experience. Wow, that is really, really, okay, these guys already have a fan uh, here. Okay, your mission, uh, we already did that. All right, next. First, a couple of words about the game interface. You're in the Nile Delta. Zoom in and zoom out with the mouse scroll. We already did that uh, with keys page up, page down. Uh, you can go to the edge of the screen or you can use the cursor keys with the bottom left corner or in the bottom left corner is the mini map showing small map of the area. Click on it to center the camera. Okay. Date, time, weather, etc. Okay. Units. Click on a unit to select it. At the bottom right, you will see the info panel, combat factor, strength, morale. 
Next to it is command panel showing available unit commands. Yep, that's what we looked at. Let's go look at another one, 11 Hussars. Uh, we've, again, we've got halt, split, target, detach, attach, uh, morale, strength. It's got 690 soldiers. So here in Perins, it kind of gives you the main feature of the unit. Here it told us we had 48 tanks. Then we've got, um, yeah, wow. That's really great. Attack soft. Huh. Attack. I, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not meaning to just stick on this uh, forever, but I do find this really interesting how they did this. I really like it. Um, attack. Yeah. So attack soft in black, attack, attack hard in red, uh, defense and movement points. Okay. Uh, well, doesn't get better than that. Um, these are all the different orders you can give. Halt moving a unit, split stack into individual units, issue a route order, manually select a target, order an artillery strike, detach a unit from division brigade, clear a minefield, build or remove a bridge. Some commands are available only at certain situations, but more on that later. Okay, groups. Units are part of large groups, divisions, brigades, and Kampfgruppen. They are all shown at the bottom of the screen in the group panel. Currently, you can only see the 7th Armored Division, but in most scenarios, you will have more groups. Select all units of a group, click on the group button okay uh 11th hustlers can we click on it from there 7th armored division parent unit hold on i think since we only have the one group when we're here we can't we don't really see anything it's all one group uh or press the group oh, okay so we could press there we go okay so i pressed one and there is the 7th armored division Okay, interesting. Um, you can also do it by holding control while clicking on one of the units. When a group is selected, the info panel shows its composition. All right, if you issue an order, it will be issued to all of the units of the group. Well, that's a nice way to do group move, right? Oh, I see, it's right here. I'm sorry if you were shouting at the screen. You can click on this icon right here and it brings, a, oh, that's really nice. Okay, man, they've done some nice things here with the interface. Uh, you can also select individual units, which may or may not be from the same group. To do it, you need to use rectangle selection uh, to click on the map. Oh, okay. Wow, look at that. Okay. Uh, you can also do by holding shift while you click on things. Yep, that works. You can detach a unit from its division brigade by clicking on detach. The unit will become detached and will not follow the group orders anymore. Okay. Uh, to issue a move order to units, select a unit and right-click on the destination hex. All right. Look at that. Okay, nice. The unit will calculate the fastest route and movement path will be shown. When you unpause the game or start a turn, the unit will start moving along that path. Try that now by ordering the unit to move and unpausing the game. Uh, to do that, uh, press the pause button on the mini-map. If the destination hex is on a road track or railroad, the unit will use road movement. You can override this and can choose standard movement by holding control while clicking on the road. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's click on that. Inter okay, let's uh, unpause this and see how this looks as it goes. Okay, we're off. It's 901, 902, 903 hours. Oh, look at this. So you see it. Huh. Okay, this is this game's pretty damn interesting to me right now. And then it moves to the <laughs> Oh, wow, check that out. That's really cool. Um Now I clicked on this to not do road movement. Is that what that red is? Yes, I think it is. It's telling when I when I hit control and I click on the road. Yeah, it's saying not to do red or road movement. You can see that in red. Huh. Okay, well that's cool. So you're going to put in all your orders and then move things around. Uh you can or things will move around when you unpause the game, right? It's now 9:32, so it's taking about 32 minutes to drive through the desert here and get up on the road by El Alamein. 
Uh, you can manually draw a movement path by hovering over a selected unit, pressing and holding the right mouse button, and dragging a movement path. When you release the button, it will receive a movement order. Okay, let's go to pause. Let's say we want to get these tanks up here. Uh, okay, so we go, oh, okay. And then here, yes. And then here, so you just hold down the right mouse button and you can then, you don't have to be beholden. Now I screwed that up because I went up to that hex instead of uh, to hold the unit press, okay. Right mouse button and dragging a movement path when you release, okay, let's do this again. And let's do the right mouse button. And we'll come up on the road there. Look at that. Okay, easy as you can please. Uh, to hold a unit, when you release the button, you receive a movement order. To hold a unit, press the Halt command, hot key bat space to see all currently active movement orders. Press and hold the space bar. Units move a lot faster on roads and somewhat faster on tracks and railroads. Movement speed increase depends on the unit type. Okay, cool. Uh, to issue a move order to a group, select a group and right click on the destination hex. The group will be issued a line formation order. Uh, well, I've already moved one thing, so and, and you can see his order there. Or if I hit the space bar, you can see and hold it. You have to hold it. You can see his movement there. Let's do a group order, though. But since I already moved the hustlers up here, let's uh, go ahead and click on this. Hold shift and click there. And then give a group order there uh, the group right okay got it okay so there whoops shift and now we'll right click there and it's going to be given a line order and you can see where the infantry you can see kind of a rifle there uh, and where the tank will go uh, in that line order <clears throat> really cool okay um, you can override by holding the control. Okay, again, it's that road formation. I assume that's like travel mode in most games, right? Uh, so let's unpause this and, and watch it move. And you can see here, it's just going to show you this next move. Now we could always go and halt the movement by just clicking here, right? So, you know, if we hit here, it essentially pauses all movement uh, until we give it a new order. I, I really like this system. I, I really do. <laughs> uh, this this is the kind of system I've been looking for, to be honest with you. This is great. Okay, let's uh, go to next while this is all... Oh, I guess it's... Did it stop that? Or, oh, maybe it paused. Oh, it did pause. Okay. Nope, it's still moving. My bad. Uh, it would say pause. Where did we see that before? Well, it doesn't really matter. We'll come, you know, let them move. You can manually draw a line and road formations by pressing holding the left mouse button and dragging the formation. Okay. You can choose the way the unit looks to toggle between models and counters. We already looked at that. Um, unit counter shows a type symbol, morale bar, division. Okay, so that's the morale bar there. Uh, strength and combat factors. Each unit occupies a hex, and there can be one or two units in a hex be one or two unit they must be from the same group shame shown by the same stripe color okay so seventh armor is red to join units in a stack move one unit to a hex occupied by another unit to split the stack hit the split command um okay real time or turn based mode to switch between the modes click on that button we already looked at that combat starts automatically when a unit is adjacent to an enemy unit based on the unit's combat factors it inflicts damage on the enemy the amount of damage is shown on the combat bar a line connecting the attacker and the defender okay cool uh each colored box on the bar represents five percent morale the enemy unit loses per hour you can also see it in the combat paddle at the top of the screen okay uh, oh, no, we went the wrong way. It wants us to go down here to Ruasat Ridge. Okay, well, let's actually then get out of this. Let's exit. Do you want to leave the tutorial? Okay. Let's go back to it. We'll go ahead and click play. And we'll go down to that ridge. I, I didn't realize we were trying to take the ridge, guys. Uh, okay, let's just go through all of this. Groups. Unit movement. Did all this. 
Uh, I did want to stack this together really quickly. Uh, and so let's put that there. Let's unpause it. I guess I could speed this up just a little bit uh, while we're, you know, moving here. So let's do a plus, plus times 64, times 128, times two. Okay. Oh, let's pause. And we'll actually slow this down. Um, oh, we've got Italians down here. Okay. Didn't realize we had any Italians. Uh, each unit occupies a hex. Okay, you can see now the double stack. And if we hover over it, you can see both units. Um, and then we can split them, I guess, like that. And now they're split, and we can give it to one or the other, depending on which one's highlighted. Can I go between the two? Split, merge. Oh. Oh, I see. Split. And there we go. Yeah, you just click back and forth like every other game in the world. Uh, one or two units in a hex, but you can connect them for movement purposes, right? Uh, Real-time turn-based. Okay, we already read that. And then it says, now move your units left to the Rua site ridge and engage the Italian units. Unpause the game. Speed it up with plus. Okay, as units fight, their strength and morale will decrease for more details hover over the combat panel when a unit's morale reaches zero it will route uh tomorrow morning it will recover and again become available for combat okay cool so let's split these two and we'll send the hussars out first just because oops if we put them back together there we go now we'll split got it okay uh let's just have them go towards the ridge uh, so I'm just going to do it this way. We'll also take the infantry and go this way. And maybe we'll just keep the tanks. Uh, let's, let's have them just follow up behind. Uh, let's unpause this. We're at 256. Let's do six. I don't know. 128. All right. Wow. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is perfect. The The tanks are just slightly behind the Hussars. Oh, now we're starting to fight. Pause. So the tanks are in range. Now, I didn't see a range amount. You know, what's their range? We see movement per hour. That's how many hexes they can move per hour. This is their defense. This is their soft attack and hard attack. Okay, these are not very strong units, obviously. Now, you see this combat bar. Okay. Uh, one Royal. Okay, that's this. One RTR, Royal Tank Regiment, against the 119th here, Italian group. Morale 19. Oh, here we go. Combat calculation. Oh, okay. Uh, soft attack factor plus four. Soft defense factor, negative one. Tank versus infantry or artillery, plus two. Defender is above the slope, so you do have this uh, altitude. And then you have negative one luck. I'm going to guess that that's kind of a dice roll uh, sort of thing. Differential is two. So there you see that right next to it. We are plus two in this battle. Excellent. Um, stacking in zones of control. Six Texas around our unit that are unit zone of control. You cannot move directly from one enemy zone of control hex into another. Routed units are the exception as they can move freely from one enemy zone of control into another. Now unpause the game and capture the objective. Okay. Let's actually, why is that on split? Oh, I was hitting detach. My bad. My bad. Okay. Uh, play. Like I said, first time I played the game. Um, yeah, there was no other unit to go into. Yeah, we didn't want to split that. Um, are we? Oh, yeah, we are attacking there. And now you can see the other battle here. 11. Differential negative one. Now, why did we end up with a negative one? Well, I guess we can go see. Uh, plus three soft attack factor. 
Yeah, this is the Hussars. So these guys are at a negative. The tanks are at a positive differential as far as all the different factors. You can see here, soft attack factor plus three, soft defense factors, negative one. That is their defense, right? Uh, defenders above the slope and luck. Okay, well, we need to get up on the slope, guys. Uh, well, he's now pulled back. Let's now see, can we take... The, when he's in combat, it looks like you can't move when he's in combat. And we're seeing the battle click down. Now, I wish there was maybe a little bit better visibility of you know, what's going on here. I get that every hour, I guess, we have a plus two here, and we have a negative one with both of our units here, the Hussars. Um, oh, you can see, oh, here, you can see the morale clicking down. Why don't we halt? Can we get out of that? Ah, uh, okay. Well, let's do this. Now, once we get up here on the slope, we should be plus one, right? Because the slope was giving us a negative one. So let's get up here and we'll take the objective. Uh, looks like we've routed the, the, the Italians took off, guys. Uh, or let's try this order, target. There we go. And you can just put a target right on that unit. These guys are moving over and we've now taken the objective. Ah, okay. Uh, captured one of one. We lost 79 casualties. The Italians lost 246, 4% minor losses, 14% significant losses, reinforcements, no reinforcements. And so you can see, or there, that is the stats, I think. Order of battle, okay, that tells you what was in or place here, or what parts of 7th Armored Division and Gruppo Maletti uh, losses. Oh, wow, okay, this is nice. Um, Intel, cool. And that shows you, you know, kind of where we started, what we were trying to do. And then we'll hit escape to close that. That was the end of the first tutorial. I really like this. I think I'm going to come back and mess around with the second and third tutorials if you're interested. Uh, but this is Attack at Dawn North Africa. And you can go play this yourself. The demo version is free on Steam, Steam right now. Uh, so go check it out if you are interested in this kind of movement, this kind of WeGo game, or just, uh, you know, the desert war in general. Anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.